Good morning, my friends, and greetings to you in the name of Jesus. And I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us meditate on God's Word before we begin our day's activities. Today's meditation is centered around Exodus chapter 3. And this chapter records the calling of Moses for a task that he wa didn't want to do. Now, in God's business, only God's choice will qualify persons to do it. It will be a great blunder anyone will make if he sets out to do God's work without weighing the matter carefully. Once you make sure that you are in the will of God, you must set out to the task of uh, molding yourself and your character according to God's desire for you to be. So let us consider a few matters that are of importance. If you desire to do God's will in God's way. In fact, to Moses himself, the task was so hard, he tried his best to decline the job. But God used him nevertheless. And let us take Moses as an example of the man God uses. And it is very important for us to know what kind of a man God is looking for. Number one, the first thing God did with Moses was that he revealed himself to him. One thing that you must be sure of in your own mind is that you have personally heard God's will concerning you. Never take any quick decision. Sometimes you will know God's will immediately and sometimes you will have to wait until God makes it plain to you. We have his promise, promises. Psalm number 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Guidance is God's responsibility. God promised three things to the psalmist here in this verse. I will teach you, I will instruct you, and I will guide you. The assurance of guidance is as sure as the forgiveness of sin in our lives. For this God is our God. In, it, in Psalm number 48 verse 14 says, For this God is our God forever. He will be our guide even to the end. God does not begin with a man and then leave him halfway through. God is trustworthy and faithful not only to begin a work but also is to perfect it and complete it. So you can be very very sure because God is an unchanging God. He does not change his mind. Once he made his choice to use you, you can trust him. And here it says, the psalmist, I will guide you even to the end. And so let us not doubt anything concerning this God's ability as well as his faithfulness. You can rely on his willingness and ability to guide. 
God is able. Because He knows the way. Sometimes we do not, but He knows. The second thing we notice in God's dealing with Moses is that happened, what happened was that the Lord revealed Himself to Moses. And along with revealing himself, Moses also understood and saw the burden that he had for his people. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7, it says, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. Make sure that you catch the burden of Jesus Christ if you want to serve the Lord. And let it become your burden. You must understand that God is looking for men and women to do His will in His way. And in order to do His will in His way, first you have to catch the burden that Jesus carries in His heart. The mission of Jesus. That's what you must catch. What is His mission? And how much He care about the burden that He has. And it is very important. And just like God saw the suffering of his people in Egypt, today he looked at the humanity. And the very fact that God sent his son into this world for the salvation of the entire human race. And that is the burden of Jesus Christ. The humanity as a whole. That is a vision that you must catch. Then in verse 8, God made a dramatic statement. This statement helps you to know God's heart and God's burden. And if you want to understand God's burden, again read another passage in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 3 verse 16. A verse that, uh, that is very familiar to all of us. We all can recite it from memory. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now in that verse you see God's burden. That very expression for God so loved the world. He is talking about the world of humanity. And his burden is the entire human race. And then again in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. We are told. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness. He is Patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to, to, to repentance. Another passage to show God's heart is Isaiah chapter 6. See, my brothers and sisters, my friends, in all these passages that I am referring to, you read it carefully you will have a better understanding of what burdens the heart of Jesus Christ. What is his passion? And in order to do his will, you need to catch not only the passion, but not only the burden of Jesus, and make that burden your burden, but then also you must have an idea of Christ's passion. Passion about people. Passion about fulfilling his mission. And unless you have that passion. 
you will not be effective in fulfilling what god wants you to do in isaiah chapter 6 you read carefully you will have no difficulty in understanding the heart of god crying for humanity's salvation and the third thing the lord did was to shock moses how did he shock moses the statement in verse 10 really shook moses off his feet this uh, element of god's call is missing these days for this reason the quality we see in moses of leadership also is missing today why moses was struck with amazement lord you said a moment ago that you have seen the afflictions and you yourself is coming down to deliver your people from the bondage of pharaoh that's what you said and then suddenly you change your mind and how come now you want me to go and do your job that really shook him god's method of accomplishing his will and his mission is what people again in order to bring people into freedom from bondage again the mother is using people and that is why god is saying what he said to moses but we find it is actually god who is going to accomplish it through moses as he closed to that conversation by saying but i certainly will be with you that is the secret hallelujah and when god calls a person to accomplish his mission and his will he not only gives him the enablement but he himself is going to be present on every step that you take so there is no need for you to panic about the call of god as moses did and you know how moses for 40 years he was engaged in doing god's will and he was able to do it because god ever remained faithful in his promise i will certainly be with you it is right to have a sense of inadequacy moses was unlike uh, today's bible college graduates the problem is before graduation they feel so adequate in themselves and they are already leaders before they ever step into the ministry they enter into the ministry to lead we have only leaders and we do not have any followers very few followers and even the conferences and uh, training programs we have it is all for leaders leaders conference leaders training and we hardly hear about a followers conference how to be faithful followers servant leaders are very rare these days and that is a very serious matter for us to consider Uh, my friends when you consider these lessons from moses you will also learn to be humble 
and you will learn to possess a servant spirit and with that you can be a successful servant leaders and you will have many many followers because you yourself are shown to be a leader means to be a follower to accept someone else's authority over you is the secret or the key for you to be a success as a leader and if you want others to follow you they are looking at you to follow your example and see what a difference it will make and i pray that these lessons will really help you to develop and mold yourself and your character so that jesus christ will have no difficulty in using you and guiding you because you are always willing to learn that is one of the best qualities of a successful leader you are always willing to learn and i pray that your life will be absolutely submissive to the holy spirit and the holy spirit will lead you and guide you and use you and to make you a success remember success is when your successor succeeds then you can claim to be a success keep that thing in mind and god bless you and may the holy spirit guide you and as god has promised in the book of psalm number 32 and also 48 let us listen to god heavenly father i thank you for those who have heard this message containing a few lessons that we learned from the life of moses a man who was hesitant to take up the job that god was giving him he tried his best to decline but nevertheless god used him i don't let it let it be our story we may be reluctant afraid to take up the job but because of your promise surely i will be with you even till the end in jesus name amen god bless you my friends enjoy this day as you enjoy the wonders of god's word to guide you amen